During both of the World Wars, different countries used espionage to try and get the upper hand on their enemies. Different organisations utilised spy networks to infiltrate enemy lines and to try and impact the battlefield. One of the most famous spies in history was Margarita Gertrude MacLeod, better known as Mata Hari. She was an exotic dancer who was executed by the French, as it was believed she was a spy for Germany during World War I. Some today believe she was innocent, however what is the story behind her death? Today we look at the ruthless execution of Mata Hari, the exotic dancer shot dead, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Born Margarita Gertrude Zell in 1876 in the Netherlands, Mata Hari was part of a rather privileged family. Her father owned a hat shop and dipped into investing in oil, and because of this he became rather wealthy and was able to send her to exclusive private schools. However, things went wrong when he became bankrupt in 1899 and her parents divorced and shortly after her mother passed away. Her father then remarried and the family fell apart. She originally studied to become a nursery teacher, but things went wrong and she left. At the age of 18, she noticed an advert in a newspaper that stated Dutch Army Captain Rudolf MacLeod, who was living in modern-day Indonesia, was looking for a wife. Details on this are rather unclear. However, she did marry MacLeod in Amsterdam, despite a large age gap. She very quickly had two children and married life wasn't very good for Margarita. Her husband was an abusive alcoholic who physically beat her and despite attempts to change his behaviour, MacLeod remained the same. One of their children died also, but the couple separated in 1902. After this, she was rather lost. She had very little money and little child support and she then moved to Paris the following year and performed in the circus as a horse rider. She also began to pose for artists to paint, but around 1904, she began to become a rather famous exotic dancer. She was described as flirtatious and would flaunt her body captivating audiences and Matahari became a huge success in Paris. She also became a mistress to a millionaire and her stage act gained her worldwide fame. She used the stage name Matahari and many saw her as an exotic and majestic lady who made a strong impression on audiences. After a while her career did go into decline as people viewed her act as cheap exhibitionism and on the 13th of March 1915 she performed her final show. Matahari also by this time became a courtesan and was known for having relationships with high profile politicians, members of the military and other influential people in different countries. Some viewed her as a dangerous temptress but others saw her as free spirited. Now as the First World War broke out the Netherlands remained neutral and as she was Dutch, Matahari could travel anywhere freely. She used to avoid battlefields and she began to become rather close with a Russian pilot named Vadim Maslov. During one battle Maslov was hit and shot down and he lost sight in one of his eyes. Matahari asked to see him and whilst visiting she was met by French officers who said she could only see her man if she spied for the French. Now before the First World War, Matahari had performed for the Prince of Germany, the Kaiser's son, and it was believed she could obtain information from the enemy. She was offered 1 million francs if she could seduce the Prince Royal and give France good intelligence about German military ideas and plans. However, the Crown Prince had never really commanded a real army and was rather unaware with regards to the military. He was the heir to Kaiser Wilhelm, however seemed more interested in partying than the conflict. Matahari in late 1916 travelled to Munich to meet with German military commanders to see if she could get a meeting with the prince. She offered to share French intelligence with Germany for money and it appears that she possibly assumed the role of a double agent. In early 1917, a German major sent messages to Berlin telling of a German spy codenamed H-21. The information around this agent closely matched the profile of Matahari and the French were able to decode these messages. At the time she provided very little intelligence to the German military, except what seemed to be gossip about French politicians, and they then ended their relationship with Matahari. After this she was then uncovered as a German spy to the French. On the 13th of February 1917, she was arrested on the Champs-Élysées in Paris inside her hotel. She was then 11 days later placed on trial, accused of spying for Germany. She was then linked to the handing over of information that cost the lives of at least 50,000 soldiers. 
This could not be proved. However, she was interrogated greatly about her activities with the German military. She was portrayed as deceitful and as someone who liked to invent lies, but she did admit to taking 20,000 francs from a German official in payment for confiscated belongings. It was claimed that this payment was in fact for her handing over information to the Germans. She appealed to Dutch officials during her trial, claiming her innocence, and her defence was let down by the fact they were not allowed to cross-examine witnesses or even bring their own to court. Following her execution, it was claimed she admitted spying during her trial, but this was never the case. She declared that her heart lied with the Allies and the French during the First World War, and she claimed that she never wanted to cause offence to France, the country that gave her so much opportunity and hope, but despite this, she was sentenced to death for spying. On the 15th of October 1917, she was driven before dawn, through Paris, to the Cassins de Vincennes, a barracks of an old fort. The soldiers who were there to carry out the execution had already been gathered and were already there in position. In total, 12 men had been sought after and they were stood in a line, with their rifles down, with a senior officer stood behind them, with his sword drawn. Whilst the car carrying Matahari arrived, she walked past the firing squad and was offered a blindfold, of which she rejected. She was also not tied up, and she stood facing her executioners. Around her were nuns and her lawyer, who accompanied her. They then stood away from Hari, and the commander of the firing squad then watched his men. He then raised his sword up in the air and the firing squad aimed their rifles. At this point, Mata Hari defiantly blew a kiss to her executioners, and as the sword fell, the soldiers fired their bullets into Mata Hari. She was killed instantly, and she hit the floor, laying prone with her face turned to the sky. Then a non-commissioned officer went over to her body, pulled out his revolver, and fired one shot against the left temple of Matahari, confirming her death. Some people consider Matahari to have been a scapegoat, and to have been a symbol of the French covering up military failings at the time. As she was high profile, she never really seemed like an important spy, however this would have made her the perfect target for the French to take down. It was described that she never passed on anything you couldn't find in the local newspapers in Spain, so really Matahari was a pretty poor spy who never handed over quality intelligence. Her trial also was rather a sham, however today Matahari is remembered as the exotic dancer who was shot dead and executed by the French. Whether you think she was a spy or whether you think she was a scapegoat, I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, Please make sure to subscribe and once again, thank you so much for watching.